Welcome to uh, part two of Economics with Spencer Molden, Supply and Demand Edition here. Uh, so in part one, we looked at demand, which is how consumers look at things. Now we're going to be looking at supply. Supply is how producers want things. Now, I'm going to be putting on my producer hat. Go Red Sox. All right. Producers, number one goal, profit. Money, money. All right. Profit is any money that a business makes that is above cost. So anything that's going to affect profit will affect my willingness to make that item. All right. Again, like with demand, we're going to look at making plastic dinosaurs. All right. So remember, profit, my goal. All right. So in this video on supply, we're going to look at supply versus quantity supplied, law of supply, the supply curve, and changes in supply that will change the supply curve. Should sound familiar. Supply is a lot like demand, except for exactly the opposite. So what is supply? Again, thinking like a producer. Supply is what producers are willing and able to sell at all prices. All right. How many plastic dinosaurs am I willing to sell at any and every price? Again, remember, profit is my goal. All right. Quantity supply is what I am willing, a producer, see that? Producers are willing and ability to sell at a particular price. How many plastic dinosaurs am I willing to produce and sell when they are selling for five cents? How many am I willing and able to produce when I can sell them for 50 bucks a piece? All right. How we were willing to produce, what we are willing to produce at a particular price creates the law of supply. Again, my goal is to make profit. So that influences greatly the law of supply. As prices increase, I can make more profit for every dinosaur I sell. So I'm going to make more of them. Why? More profit. As prices drop, I make less money for every dinosaur I sell. I make less of dinosaurs. Again, it's all about profit. Right? It's called profit motive. Now, I can take this law of supply and I can graph it just like we graphed the law of demand. Find my blue marker here. All right, so have our domain, our curve graph here. Again, price vertical, quantity horizontal. At low prices, I'm not making much money for every item I make. I'm not going to make very many of them. But as that price climbs, I make more money for every dinosaur I make. I produce more. Connected ducts. We have a supply curve. Okay. Just like with the demand curve, if I change the price, I just move along the line. And again, like the demand curve, if something other than price changes, I move the whole line. If I, if something changes that it causes me to want to produce more, shift the curve to the right. Right is again, is an increase. If I want to produce less, because it's going to cut into my profit margin, without changing the price of the product, I will produce left, less, which is a shift to the left. Right increase, left decrease. Now, I can see that you're probably thinking, what will cause these lines to move? Good question. Let's look at it. What makes the line curve? Well, we're going to call it NICE G. N I C E G. All right. Uh, not a good acronym, I know, but it works. All right. N is for natural disaster. Again, thinking like a producer. If it cuts into my ability to make a profit, I'm going to make more or less, depending on that. Natural disaster tend to make me want to shift my curve to the left every time, because they tend to be bad things, natural disasters, all right, or war, man-made phenomena. All right. So a natural disaster comes in and uh, a hurricane hits the East Coast, knocking out my major supplier of plastic. Plastic being a major component of a plastic dinosaur, I no longer have it. I can no longer make as many plastic dinosaurs, so I will produce less. Didn't change the price of the dinosaurs, I just don't have the ability to make as many dinosaurs as I did before. All right, there's all kinds of things that can be fit in here. Uh, we take over other countries, we gain more resources. All right, uh, so input cost, I, input cost. All right, there's lots of things that go into making this plastic dinosaur. Yes, the plastic, then there's paint. I gotta paint the dinosaurs. I have to make, have somebody make these usually made by a machine, all right, to help me move things around. I have to have trucks, right? Those trucks have to have drivers, right? Uh, 
at my storefront. I have to have people stocking the shelves with plastic dinosaurs. I have to have somebody taking the money. So there's lots of cost that goes into making one plastic dinosaur. If any of those cost changes, it will change my willingness and ability to make more of these. Prices go up of resources, I'm going to make less. It cuts into my profit margin. All right. If resource costs go down, profit goes up, I make more. All right. uh, C, competition. I'm the only maker of plastic dinosaurs right now. Suddenly, uh, my neighbor starts selling plastic dinosaurs as well. Now we have twice as many plastic dinosaurs on the market. See that? Real simple math. All right. The more producers you have making something, the more supply there is on the market. So competition increases supply. All right. Uh, next, E, expectations. What I as a producer expect the economy to do will influence my willingness to produce. I expect good things, I produce more because you'll have money to spend. If I produce, expect bad things, I produce less because you won't have money as consumers to spend. So what I think will happen in the future influences my production line now. Lastly, G, government tools. This is a three-parter, okay? Part one, there's three government tools here. Taxes, oh, taxes. All right, taxes, business taxes, are called an excise tax. The ta government will tax me on the production of dinosaurs. Why, I don't know, but they do. All right, so I have to pay a tax every time I make one of these. Higher taxes, I make less, cuts into my profit margin. Lower taxes, I produce more. Subsidies. Maybe the government's going to pay me to make plastic dinosaurs. They see a great need for these out in the world. So they'll pay me to make them. All right. The more they're paying me, the more I'm willing to produce. Automatic cost covering of cost equals more profit. They take away the subsidy or lower the subsidy. Now my cost goes up. I produce less, cuts into my profit margin. Lastly, regulations. These are the rules that I have to play by. I have to pay my drivers and stockers and checkers minimum wage. All right, minimum wage goes down, my costs go down, profits go up, I make more. All right, uh, pollution regulations. If I was making food, FDA standards. All right, those are all regulations that we have that producers have to play by. All right, the more regulations there are, the more rules the business have to play by, the higher the cost of production. Uh, nice G, all right, natural disasters, input cost, competition, expectations, government tools. They will cause the supply curve to shift to the right if it causes me to make more money, left if it causes me to make less. So right is an increase, left is a decrease. Next time we add them together.